Hello, good evening. Well, as always, good to have your company here on Granada. Without you, I'd be talking to myself. Some nights, I think I am. But uh, dropping in to keep us company at half eight, George Cole in his new comedy series, followed by a visit to Cardale for peak practice. But for the moment, you'll find us in Amadeo. <laughs> Are you doing a bit of work? Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of lambs missing their mum. Is she dead? Yeah. They were never born. My mum died when I was born, didn't she? Yeah. Shortly after, in an accident. You know that. What was she like? I've told you before, she was smashing. And she was so proud of you. Was she like Sarah? Um. Yeah, a bit. In looks, anyway. Did you out with her all the time, too? No. And there'll be no more rows with Sarah. I promise. She changed her mind just like that. Why? I didn't ask. We don't exactly talk that much. She said she wanted the divorce to go ahead. I said, fine. You don't think it's because she's betting young, do you? No. Well, whatever the reason, let's get cracking. Sort out an offer? I am doing. I'll handle this. No, you won't. Come on, lads. You can't even bear the idea that she might be having an affair. You're letting emotions get in the way. It's my marriage we're talking about. No, this is business. I'll come round to the cottage tonight with something suitable for her to sign. Morning. Morning, Dave. Dave Kin just rang. Uh, can you take us some feed over the stables? Yeah. Oh, it's a three-man job, eh? Well, I mean, Jack. It's been more like a one-man job this year, Ned. It won't be forgotten. But you're sorry you'll miss this, eh? I know that means hard work, but it's the best time of year, isn't it? I haven't missed it. I've had love of my own. All right. Where was that? <clears throat> Renting our Sam's room out already, are you? Still, the sheep won't smell as much. It's your room we should be renting out, and you're never here. Yeah. And whatever he's done, yeah. you don't talk like that about your brother. What have you come home for, any old you want some clothes washing? I wash my own clothes, ma'am. All oh, those knickers that are in the washing basket, they're our butchies. Get them off washing lines, don't you, butch? You really think you're funny, you, don't you? No. What I do think's funny, however, is that last week we didn't have any cheese, yeah. and now we got lambs and ewes. We were wandering, didn't know who they were. Have to bring them home, didn't we? Yeah. Wandering on a road or in a field? Yeah. There's enough of the village against us without one of our own putting it around that we're thieves. So are you stopping away because you don't want to be seen with this? Don't ask for reasons, ma'am. Just be grateful. No, I'm just stopping with a mate for a few days, that's all. If it's some lad, I'll break his neck. And why does it have to be a lad? Well, go on then, who are you stopping with? With Dolores. And what's the mother think about that? She doesn't have a problem yeah. about it. You should be here, Artina, with us. It's times like this that families have to stick together. What's wrong with your own home? No, it's just that Dolores is dead handy for school, all right? A schooling is important, though, I suppose. Ma'am, they're on holiday. School's broke up a fortnight back. It's so strange. It's like I'm not dealing with my own son anymore. Well, all being well, he should be back to normal before you notice it. Uh, trouble is, we don't know what long-term damage has been done. All we can do is deal with what we see. Has he shown any sign of opening up at all? No. It's as if he's taken a vow of silence. I can't imagine where he gets his stubborn streak from. <laughs> he did mention one thing. He said he'd looked after a lamb. Was he telling the truth? I don't know. I tried asking him about it, but he clammed up. I didn't like to push it. Maybe he talked to me. But he won't talk to me or Sarah. There are times when it's easier to talk to someone else. Yeah, well, in that case, maybe you'd tell him how much we love him. 
Oh, I think that one's best coming from you and Sarah, and as often as possible. Ah, oh, flaming out. What do they want? A pound of flesh. We needed their help when we were looking for Robert. They want happy family snaps, that's all. No chance. Hey, you lot! This is private land! It'll only take two minutes, Jack. Either that or they'll pester you all day. Please, I thought he was going to kiss me. Subtlety's never been Chris's strong point. If he was that eager, I'd say you're in the driving seat. So, you reckon I should go for the shares? It's where Chris's real wealth is. And you'll definitely buy them from me. I don't want to be left with a load of paper that's worth nothing to me. Don't you trust me? <laughs> if you were a man saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I still don't understand why you want them, though. If anything happens to Frank... Yes, but surely you'd get everything. I honestly don't know. Frank always said I'd be OK, but I'm not sure he thinks I could run the business. Yes, but you've proved you can when he was ill. Yeah, it doesn't mean to say he had to like it, though. Mm. I think Frank hopes against hope that Chris and I can become bosom pals. So if you've got some of Chris's shareholding... It would give Chris less of a power base within the company. And if Frank did leave all his shares to you, you'd have control of the whole shooting match. Yeah, I suppose I would. Never thought of it that way. <laughs> Looks like you've got a visitor. Say, so asked me to bring some feed down. Oh? Said you'd run and need it straight away. Cathy, do you know anything about this? No, sorry. Where do you want it put in? I presume Cathy's help will do rather than mine. I don't need help, just directions. Right. Cathy? Uh, I need to get this finished. Well, you better follow me then, David. You're not the only ones with work to do, you know. We'd just like to say thanks for all your help, and um, I hope we can get back to normal now. Just one more, please. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I go back down to the homes now, Dad? Of course. Would you like to show them to Wendy? You can feed one with the buckle if you like. Oh, that'd be smashing. You are on it. <laughs> How nice your mum and dad. You frightened them, you know. Is that what you wanted to do? No. Everybody was worried. A lot of people went looking for you. I know. I bet you were frightened a bit, weren't you? Do you know a lot about land? I bet if you went to another farm or somewhere, the farmer would be dead impressed by land, you know. Why should I go to another farm? Oh, you didn't like it here, like... Well, like when you ran off. I'm back now, though. And I can help Dad and Ned. So that's all right, isn't it? Come on. Do I get the gory details, or are you just going to keep me guessing? Nothing to tell. I like things simple. Dave thinks I'm stringing him along. And are you? Depends what you mean. I thought we were mates. He, uh, he wanted more. Name me a man who doesn't. Kim, under normal circumstances, I'd fancy him like mad, but for just a moment. That's why I told Chris he could have his divorce to get things over with. And I might have a clue whether I want Dave or anyone else. Because right now, I just don't know. Were you run away again? I didn't run away. I was on a secret mission. You weren't. Everyone knows you ran away. Can you keep a secret? Crush your heart and hope to die. Of course. Shut your eyes. That's my army badge. I'll need it if I go on another mission. When? Not until I'm given secret orders. Until then, I've got to stay on the farm and pretend to be ordinary. Like you. She's using you, mate. She picks the best looking bloke she can find, apart from me, just to rub Chris's nose in it. And then when she's finished doing that, she'll start backing off. You've been had, pal. Or rather you have. Look, she's mixed up, that's all. 
Yeah, and you'll just soft that's all. What's that? Is it just a gift or have you been on a course to learn how to ask stupid questions? Yeah, marriage to you. Oh, you've remembered we're married, have you? She needs a shoulder to cry and just point her in my direction. I don't want these here. They're ordinary. I wanted slimline. You just said bitter lemon. I said slimline bitter lemon. Now take that crate back and bring me what I asked for. Right, that's it. I've had enough. You want slimline bitter lemon, you go and get him. You could do with exercising more than your big stupid gob. Sometimes her repair thickening shampoo thickens fine hair fast. Simply wash and style as often as you like. See the difference. To clean up after your family's baths with an ordinary liquid, you have to rub. But with the power of Jip Bathroom, you don't. Its power spray attacks line scale and will dissolve soapy marks without rubbing. Just spray on and leave for a few minutes, rinse away, and look, everything's brilliantly clean. With no effort and no sponge. Jif Bathroom for brilliant, sparkling results. That's the power of Jif. Kellogg's crunchy nut corn flakes are delicious golden flakes of corn with honey, nuts, and brown sugar. which makes them absolutely irresistible. Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes. The trouble is, they taste too good. Color, color, and more than color, moisturizing care. Rue Sublime, an innovation from L'Oreal Paris. Color and complete care for your lips. Rue Sublime, from L'Oreal, with moisturizing and protecting ingredients. For color and moisturizing care. 30 colors that last and care. For me, that's perfection. Rouge Sublime from L'Oreal Perfection. Perfect makeup, perfect care too. In the glare of summer, the merciless sun harms the spectacle wearer. Escape is not easy. At Specsavers, our solution is a pair of stylish prescription sunglasses worth nearly 60 pounds, absolutely free. You can obtain these when you buy spectacles from our 59.95 range. Specsavers Opticians, local eye care for Britain. You're the new veterinary, yes. You'll be off to see Mrs. Drummond then. Well, yes. Oh, be easy. Here you are, sir. Thanks. Off to see Mrs. Drummond, are you? Yes. Oh, uh, easy. You want me to be your housekeeper? Uh, my predecessor recommended you very highly. Your predecessor was a miser. He was a skinflint. He was a penny pinch and scrooge. He was too mean even to buy a decent coffee. And I'm not sure I want to go through all that again. No taste like this, Cafe. Is there? rub your nose in it for what you did out there. That's what you see me as, isn't it? Something to be trained or put down. If only you were a dog instead of just a prat. And you could stop talking to me like that. There's no audience here. No witnesses, you mean. <sighs> Go on, then. Blow it completely. You're only still in a job because of me. All right. That's what you'd like me to do, wouldn't it? Give you a slap so you can go out there and show it off. I don't need to show people anything, Terry. They know just what you are. Aye, the man who got us in here. Me, my name. I'm the celebrity, sweetheart, not you. You're not a celebrity. You're not even a has-been. You're a never-was. And just remember who kept us from getting booted out of here. Aye, and I know just how you did it. Batted your eyelids and waved your chest at Turner. You're only jealous because people like me. They can see I don't put an act on like you. Right. That's it. I'm going to get this sorted once and for all. We'll see who's really boss round here. Where do you think you're going? 
Fred, could you come and lend a hand, my dear? It's getting very busy in there. Oh, and will you ask Terry if he bring up some more slimline bitter lemons when you go a minute? I'm celebrating my new job, cleaning for that Emma Nightingale. She seems like a nice lass. Have to wear a uniform, do you? Dungarees, Doc Martens, skinhead haircut. What's he on about? That's what they wear. Call themselves feminists. You never see nothing less feminine in your life. Oh, you mean if they were real women, they'd fancy some smelly, vulgar pig of a man who picks his nose and scratches his bum while he's watching telly. They all do that, don't they? Just think it's something they learn in the changing room. You know, while they're not checking each other out in the showers. You both know it's not natural, so stop trying to defend it. It's a bad influence on kids. If either of them starts anything with mine... Oh, by the way, have you found out where Robert was? They don't know, but I do. Oh, yeah? I can't tell you, though. It's a secret. Well, you can share it with us, though. I promised. Well, she don't know nothing. She's kidding us. I know I was on a top-secret mission with the army. Is that what he told you? It's true. I've even seen his top-secret badge. Oh, great return, sir. Another game for you. Gerald! Hi! Oh, hello. Terry, didn't know you were a member here? I'm not. Could you spare me a minute? Now? Well, I've come to Skipdale special. His secretary told me you'd be here. Do you mind, sir? Don't think I can manage another game anyway. This better be good. Oh, afternoon. Do you realise what you're wearing? I know. Lousy colour, isn't it? It's mine, you little cow. Oh. Do you want me to take it off? Yes, this instant. Only I'm not wearing anything underneath, you see, and Biff might walk in. Oh, uh, you've nothing to worry about on that score. He doesn't fancy you in the slightest. I think it's the mouth, you know. The fact that it's never shut. Oh, and besides that, of course, he's madly in love with you. Or at least you think he is. I don't think. I know. That's painfully obvious, Jeff. Otherwise, you'd realise he's just having you on. Yeah, you wish. I don't wish. I know he's just keeping you sweet because Luke's begged him to. You lying little bitch! Now think about it, Jess. I know it hurts your tiny little mind, but try. Luke's petrified that you're going to go squealing off to Mummy and Daddy. I know what you're doing, Tina. Luke might not be able to see what a vicious piece of work you are, but I can. You're just trying to split Biff and me up. Well, it won't work because we love each other. <laughs> Who are you trying to convince, you snotty mare? Me or yourself? I'll see you in the sauna, sir. Where the devil couldn't you make an appointment? It's important. Creep me away to the top of sea. Why do you think that is any business of yours? Now, what's so important? The wall back. He's going down the pan. Oh? When I spoke to Britt, she said how well things were going. Oh, she's never been much of a businesswoman, has she? Well... You see, the thing is, I could do with a move. Somewhere a bit livelier, you know, in the city. After a few weeks in Emmerdale, I could see why they find sheep attractive. What does Brit think about this? Does that matter? I was in a place of my own. You don't realise, do you? Eh? Without Brit, I wouldn't put you in a caravan selling soup and sandwiches in a lay-by. She, my friend, is the beauty and the brains in your little partnership. You took us on because of me. Because of her name. A rugby star. Who are you kidding? Half the Farsley side didn't know your name. The ones that did knew better than to pass the ball to you. You're pushing it, mate. I could shut it, it, Terry. Now, as I was saying, you're only working for the brewery because your wife is. We like married couples. It promotes a friendly atmosphere. But if that marriage turns sour, then we may have to choose one or the other of that particular couple. And I think it's slowly getting through to you which one we choose, isn't it? I could have gone to a bigger brewery. I still might. Don't let me stop you. But if by any remote chance Brit feels the same way as you about leaving the wool pack, tell her I'm sure we can find her something a little livelier. Her choice. Now, are you intending to follow me in here as well? Shall I? Okay. <clears throat> An official announcement. 
As of tonight, I am a fully fledged resident here. <laughs> oh, excellent. Welcome to the pleasure, Dad. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, how much do you want for the kitty? Oh, ten pounds will be fine. A tenner? He's the only one earning. Yeah, well, I don't get that much, but if you think twenty, it'll no, be. No, ten's enough. It's ten more than some people contribute. You, you mean? No, I was referring to you, actually. I don't live here. So you could have fooled me. Well, everybody else seems to. Look, how about if I put ten in now and ten if we need it later? Yeah, that sounds great, Biff. No, that's not fair. Jess, it's all right, really. <sighs> Look, I still think she ought to put something in the kitty. You know I would if I could, don't you, Luke? Yeah. And it's OK, Jess. Anyway, who's cooking tonight? Well, according to the rota, it's Miss Sulky over there. Yes, well, how come you're on that rota if you don't live here? Because I want to do me bit around here, all right? Listen, just because you've got more money than me, don't think Look, that you... that's it. I'm not cooking, not until she puts something in the kitty. All right, then, you've got a deal. I don't put anything in the kitty, and you don't try to poison us again like you did with that salmon spread that was passed its sell-by date. Honestly, all that education, you can't even make a sandwich. Hey, we could go to the wool pack, Luke. Oh, yeah, you can afford to spend money in the pub. Well, if it saves me having to listen to you whining on, Jessica, it's money well spent. I'll go and get ready. Well, <coughs> at least it'll give us a place to ourselves. Oh, look, you really think I'm in the mood after that? How was that to know I'd catch him with his boss? Well, you ought to try sucking up to somebody other than girls in the bar sometimes. Do us more good than having a barney with him at his club. Now, we managed to keep your stupidity with the whiskey quiet. Now there'll be alarm bells ringing all over the brewery. Well, come on, what did he say to you? That was between me and him, all right? No, anything you discuss with Gerald Taylor involves me. It's always me that's dealt with him before. We agreed that, remember? I don't know just how you dealt with him. Same as you deal with any other bloke. Oh, you've never complained before. You were always delighted at how I could twist him round my little finger. Yeah, flaming tart. Reg, ready for the fray? Yeah. And Terry, we need those bitter lemons, the slimline ones, OK? I'm sorry about that earlier, Jessica Luke. It's just she hates me and she makes me all defensive. Oh, don't worry. Jessica's always had a pretty sharp tongue. I would like to put something in the kitty, though. I wouldn't feel so bad about stopping over so much then. Oh, there's no need to feel bad about it. A fiver, maybe. Please let me. Well, if that's what you want. <laughs> the only thing is, I meant to ask my dad for some cash this afternoon, but I forgot. Well, I told you, it doesn't matter. It does to her, though, doesn't it? I tell you what, you lend me the cash now and I'll pay you back later. Hi, Jan. There's the road for next week. Thanks. Have you found out where Robert's been yet? No, he's just not saying. Wherever it was, though, it seems to be well looked after. What, and there's no sign he's been interfered with or anything? No, no, definitely not. He's a lucky lad. Oh, I think we'd all given him up for dead, really. That's the dangerous secret missions for the army. What? That's what I told Donna. Well, when was that, then? This morning. Saw it a secrecy, but, of course, the first thing she did was to tell us. Did she say why? I wouldn't tell her anymore. Didn't want her just thinking he'd run away. Jeez. Yeah, okay. Oh, Britt. It is for you, my dear. I'll take it in the back room. Bits of lemons. Slim line. Now that she's agreed to a divorce, we've got to sound grateful. Make it seem like we're offering her a fortune. If I offer her 80... You think she'll accept? She might, you won't. You want to see her paid off fairly. So, you push me up to 90. Show what a good chap you really are. I'd hate to negotiate against you, Dad. Yeah, so would I. Hey, I'm sorry, Gerald. No, no, don't worry. Well, yeah, he is like that. You know, it has been a long time. Tomorrow? Uh, yes, I can handle Terry and Alan. And you as well, if you play your cards right. <laughs> I'll look forward to it. Terry, uh, the business off. Would you put a new barrel on? Ah, oh, you shouldn't have bothered. No reason why we can't be civilised about all this, is there? Absolutely. Chris? Now, I think the one thing we don't want is for a lot of solicitors to get rich from all this. It is a family affair, after all. 
I think you could have chosen a better word than affair, Frank, even if it is appropriate. How is Rachel, Chris? Looking forward to joining the Tate dynasty? She's fine, thanks. Good, good. I, uh, I think you're right about solicitors, Frank. After all, I can trust you, can't I? I hope so. That's why I want you to have half the value of this house, say 40,000, and that's top market, mind, and another 40,000 in cash to cover Chris's other assets. 80,000? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's really enough, Dad. I mean, Cathy did put her own, her own life on hold after my accident. I think we shouldn't forget that. Oh, well, let's make it 85. You were right first time, Chris. Not really enough, didn't you say? I'm being generous, but uh, to keep things from getting acrimonious, why don't I say 90? Because, Frank, 90 is nowhere near enough either. After all, Chris is a one-third shareholder in Tate Holdings. The property alone is worth, what was the valuation last year, 2.3 million? Then there's the new golf course, another 850,000. Now, if you move on to profit projections, the holiday park should clear 210,000. Mind you, the heritage farm only 11, not nearly as much as it should. Then there's the farm. Hang on a minute, Cassie. Where have you got all these figures from? You're not telling me they're inaccurate. I'm telling you nothing. Do you want me to continue, then? <laughs> Sandwiches, gentlemen. Your mouths are wide open. You could do with something to fill them. Where the hell has she got all those figures from? Your computer? Oh, she hasn't got a clue how to use it. She didn't have a clue about your assets either, according to you. Be Dave Glover. He was looking shifty in the office. No, he wouldn't know where to find those figures. And could he read a balance sheet? Tell you what, Frank, you and Chris go away, think of the number you first thought of, double it, add nine, that sort of thing, until you reach what? A quarter of a million? Then we might have something to talk about. How much? Oh, I think you've got a better head for figures than I have, Frank. And in the meantime, I'll tell my advisor what you've offered. <laughs> we both enjoy a good laugh. 